Okay, students, I'm not going to let you off the hook. Relationships go two ways, and you share some responsibility for making this happen. Um, you, too, need to be deliberate and creative in, in developing these relationships. I think, first and foremost, you need to recognize that the intimacy and the community and the spiritual richness that you enjoy and benefit from in Cats for Christ is available to you because of the people of this congregation who have supported this ministry for decades, literally, and, uh, and be grateful for that. Express your appreciation to them in word and in deed. Also recognize that the body of Christ is much larger than just your friends in Cats for Christ uh, and act accordingly. Um, maybe another more harsh way to say that is to resist the temptation to be self-centered and insular. Uh, don't, um, don't isolate yourselves or detach yourselves from the rest of the body. Remember that we're called to be part of the larger body. You know, Cats for Christ is not an island. No part of the body is. Um, it, we're, we're all one body, one Lord, and it's a message we all have to take to heart. So like us old folk, you know, on Sunday morning, don't just cluster among yourselves. Meet some new people. Go out and, and uh, introduce yourself. Hey, maybe they'll ask you to lunch. Um, and do the same when, when we come to the campus center. And so if, if you have someone helping with, um, you know, one of the first wel the welcome week activities, you have someone barbecuing for you, you've got someone serving lunch for you, you've got someone providing food uh, uh, in some other capacity, um, go talk to them. Initiate. Um, make connections. Ask, uh, show interest in us. Ask us about our kids. And for some, some of you, grandkids, soon me, not that any of my kids are going to have kids right away. Not, okay, whew, how do I make that clear? Um, but anyway, uh, take the initiative, you know. There, relationships are two ways, okay? Um, think of ways you can serve the congregation. And, and what you're doing this Friday night is awesome. Uh, that is such a tremendous gift to family, families with young children. Uh, so parents, take advantage of that. This Friday, 6 to 10 p.m. here at the building, the college students will be here to serve you Take your kids so you can escape and have up to four hours. But, you know, when you, when you drop your kids off and when you pick them up, take a moment to thank them, meet them, meet somebody new, engage in a little conversation, get to know them. Uh, volunteer to help with the various ministries of this congregation. Sign up to help with snack time. Help teach a children's class. Seek out the teens. This would be a great way. Seek out the teens and develop friendships with them and invite them to some of your activities. All kinds of ways you can serve on snack time Sundays. Don't just be a consumer. Uh, you can bring food, right? You have to eat. Um, don't just take. Give some. And, and when you come, and when we all come in here, you know, let's mix it up some. Don't just sit with your friends. Seek somebody else out and sit with them. Um, and speaking of contributing, uh, you should contribute financially as well. Um, I don't see anything in the word that says because you're a poor student, you don't have to give to uh, the local congregation. So I'd encourage you to consider that. So much of this is just simply about being available and accessible uh, and then letting God use you to help and to serve and to encourage. You know, it's, it's less about formal programs and more about getting out of ourselves and, and looking for opportunities and letting God work. And when you do that, you're going to find yourself in the middle of some amazing things, and you're going to find yourself in the middle of God's transforming work on people. Um, you know, at different times, you're going to find yourself exhausted, but other times you'll be energized from it. Sometimes you're going to be discouraged. Other times you're going to be encouraged. Sometimes you're going to want to give up. But other times you're just so excited to keep going, ready, mobilized. Sometimes you'll laugh, sometimes you'll cry. Uh, you'll make a deal with a college student to lose 10 pounds if she quits smoking. And 10 months later, we're both true to that promise. Uh, you'll help people through, uh, get through their broken relationships with boyfriends, girlfriends, family members. You'll help a young engaged couple deal with their sexual temptations before they get married.
you'll find yourself uh, in an emergency counseling session with someone contemplating suicide. <sighs> you'll deal with the long-term effects of sexual abuse, rape, eating disorders. It's real life, and it's messy. And campus ministry is real life and messy. But out of that mess uh, rises a redeemed people, changed forever by the living God. And that's what keeps us going. You'll get to baptize Paula and then be subjected to her infectious hugs and smiles whenever you see her on campus. You'll be out on campus and you'll see Caleb, the, 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 the Caleb the giant, as he was called in Rwanda, and, and be crushed by his hug. You'll get to witness three others be baptized like this last fall semester. You'll get to work side by side with them and sharing the gospel on an LST mission. And then you get to watch Caleb go to his home congregation in Stafford, Kansas, and get up in front of people, which is no small chore for this young man and share how God used him uh, in Rwanda. Then you'll have an elderly lady come up afterwards and thank us profusely of all the good that the campus ministry is doing for the students. You get to work side by side with them packing uh, backpacks with school supplies to send to Rwanda. You'll get to see the light come on in their eyes when, when God reveals some truth to them in the word. You'll get to watch the same person that was contemplating suicide that you sat in that emergency counseling session with, you'll get to see her on a Saturday night uh, reading and studying, discussing the book of James from the Bible with a friend of hers instead of what she used to do, which was get totally plastered in Aggieville every weekend. You'll pray with them, you'll serve them, you'll praise God with them, and then you'll thank God for them. And you'll be different because of it. I was, I was talking to Kerry the other day, and he told me about a campus minister th that was offering advice on how to do campus ministry. And this, this campus minister simply said, love them students. And I think that's a great way to sum it up. Love them students. And if we truly love them, then we'll consider their needs greater than our own needs and we'll sacrifice our own comfort and familiarity and move into their world and be the light of Christ to them. And in so doing, we will follow in the steps of Paul, much like Harold Mitchell did for me 30 years ago. And we too will share in the blessings and all to the glory of God. Let's worship.